Before you build, you need sun protection for the boat. In our case, we used the house's already existing wall to create a lean-to type structure. The roof itself was covered with solid corrugated sheeting, whilst the sides were left open, and this was covered with tarpaulin sheets, as we required it. A simple home sewing machine can sew the low-cost tarpaulin, and this will get it to any size you want. Materials can be bought from many different suppliers. We fetched all the materials for the two hulls and decks on a simple box trailer. Cost of transport can range from 10 to 30% of the cost of the actual material, so make sure you shop around. Most boat designers will provide material lists. In this case, Richard Woods did exactly that. Some designers like Mike Waller provide very detailed lists, and our current Bruce Roberts yacht also had a good materials list. Once you have decent boat plans, a cover under which to build, and the materials, you can actually start building. The first step in building a boat is to study the plans repeatedly until you get a good idea of the project and the various steps to follow. The second step is to build a platform, or also known as a strong back, on which to position the structure. This structure has to be strong and level. Strong enough to carry the weight of the entire project and of course the weight of one or two people leaning or standing on the structure as well. If unsure, get a black and white suit to inspect. I used a laser or plumb pointer to align and level the strong back as well as the bulkheads. In this case, the strong back does not have to be level since they are mounted on temporary legs and these legs can be positioned individually and also the bulkhead on the legs. The center line although is very critical and for this a laser on a tripod was employed successfully. After the offset tables were used to cut the bulkheads, the notches that would receive the stringers are cut from the bulkhead plans. This was done with a budget router with a precision bit of around 10 millimeters diameter. A handy technique when building a boat is to eyeball your project often. This means stepping away from it and looking at it from a distance. This helps you to get a feel for not only levels but also symmetry and overall correctness. Stepping away from your work gives you a different perspective and this helps you to pick up problems before they are permanent. The stringers are fitted to the bulkhead dry at first just to check fit and feel and then they are glued in place. To keep the stringers in place while the epoxy glue dries, we used rubber straps or cords. They work well and are not expensive, something we already had anyway. We always rounded the inside of our stringers to create a softer look and feel when finishing the boat on the inside. This was done once the stringer had been scarf joined at full length. We used epoxy for all joins. Don't go for cheap glue on boats, low cost does not equal nasty. On the stem and the stern, the stringers are screwed into place and glued. Larger vessels have the screwed interface more often, or at every bulkhead. It is important to know that the plans for this boat gave us all the instructions that we needed. If you require extra input, then use the internet or ask us questions. There is a great book written by the Goujon brothers. Uh, it casts a lot of light on the shadows of boat building.